To what extent will you go to chase the great American dream? Will you even put your own life at risk? Some do, and that dream is what inspired this group of 11 Gujaratis to huddle in a caravan and travel to a nondescript house in the tiny Canadian town of Emerson on a wintry January morning. Situated along the border with the US state of North Dakota, this town is a hot spot for illegal crossings. Among the 11 who reached there on Jan 18, 2022 was a family of four. 39-year-old Jagdish Patel and his wife Baishali, their 11-year-old daughter Vihangi, and a 3-year-old toddler son Dharmik. They had all started the biggest journey of their life around 10 days ago from their village of Dingucha in North Gujarat, 45 kilometers drive from Ahmedabad. First, they flew 12,000 kilometers away to Toronto on Jan 12 on a valid and legal Canadian visa. Then they stayed in a hotel for a few days, waiting for the agent's call, telling them the time was right. Emerson's minus 35 degrees centigrade weather was the opposite of Gujarat's plus 30 degrees in January, making it so cold for them that even their tears would freeze below their eyes. Additionally, the area was also uninhabited, and no human could be seen for long distances in the snow. Inside the house was as cold as the fireplace didn't have enough wood to keep the whole group warm at the same time. No amount of eating khakra or fafra could keep the Gujaratis warm. but they were comforted by the fact that the two well built canadian agents were there to help them cross the snowy border take short steps and walk slowly so you maintain your balance and don't fall we will walk south for 10 kilometers until we spot lights of the natural gas plant on the other side of the border a van will be waiting for you near the red river he will take you inside the us got it The mother Vaishali however was still concerned how will our children manage in this freezing weather but the instructor's reply left them with no option this weather is your best opportunity to cross without getting caught or you could go back to canada or return to india your wish jagdish tried to calm down his nervous wife ame aa dura avava mate bahu sangharsh karyo che bachcha no bhavishya mate socho jagdish had run out of options The many jobs he had tried in the last few years as a teacher in a government school in Kalol city, a textile trader in his brother's garment business in Gandhinagar, and even as a kite seller for a while had not amounted to anything substantial. So in 2021 he came back to do farming on his ancestral land in Dingucha village. The Patels were a reasonably well-off family living in a nice two-story home. His mother Madhu Patel, being the deputy sarpanch of the village, commanded a lot of respect. but for him and many in the patidar community land holdings had decreased over time and agriculture alone could not support a growing family for this reason his patidar community also demanded reservations in government jobs but never got it which is also why almost every home in dingucha proudly sent a family member to the united states but none from jagdish's family had gone so he too began thinking of going to america not only for himself but also to make his family proud Getting to the US seemed easy. Lane walls were cloaked with paintings and billboards advertising permanent residency overseas and student visas in double quick time. Every house in Dingucha is filled with Costco candy and jalapeno wafers brought home by these new immigrants. In fact, in any village of North Gujarat, be it a school dropout or an MBA graduate, most will do anything to get to the US, even if it means selling Dunkin Donuts or cleaning toilets. Further, nowadays Not having any family member in the US was making it tough to even find a bride. No US, no marriage because immigrants are generous with their dollars back home and send to their village large contributions for constructing schools, markets, temples and in one case even a panchayat building. Dingucha's Brahmani Mataji Temple Trust receives huge dollar donations which in turn gives youngsters 0% interest loans to study abroad recently an anonymous donation of $150000 by a us based patidar to the much revered vardani mataji temple in rupal village of gandhinagar went viral because garlands made out of $3050 notes were offered to the deity and formed part of the other decoration so it's easy to see why villagers hold overseas indians in such high esteem and why jagdish would have wanted the same This is the situation and mindset with which Jagdish Patel and his family had come to Emerson with. His wife Vaishali, who was having cold feet at the last hurdle of their dream, finally came around. तुम्हें बराबर बोलो छो जगदीश, आ अम्मे करवो अच्छो ये. 
With fresh confidence, the group then donned matching winter coats with fur-trimmed hoods, gloves and rubber boots. Vaishali made the kids put on their woolens and gave the now excited cuties a last-minute pep talk. Bahar thandi hasse. Ame adventure tarike vicharo. But the group was in for a rude shock when their local agents, after pointing them towards a general direction, go that way, straight, started their vehicle and drove away, abandoning them to do the treacherous journey on their own. Worse, it was almost sundown and soon it would be total darkness. Ame te banne agent vagar kevili te akar so. Bhagwana apani bhagyani khuban najdik lavya che. Te na apana madad kar se. So they ventured ahead, the daughter Vihangi holding her mother's hand and the toddler in his father's arms. But howling winds at a dangerous 35 miles per hour were whipping up snow everywhere. And a blizzard swamped them after a couple of hours, reducing visibility very badly. The raging winds made both children really uncomfortable, forcing the parents to stop and tend to them. Unaware, the rest of the group continued walking and within minutes, the four got separated from them. Jagdi shouted, Stop! Help! Help! But in the swirling winds, no one could hear his now frail voice. He even tried making a call, but there was no signal on the mobile phone. He looked in all directions to search for a temporary shelter where they could take refuge. But there was nothing except snow all around. Scared, but with no choice, they started trudging ahead again in the blinding blizzard. But did they make it to their dream destination? Because of tropical weather at the US-Mexico border, most wannabe immigrants from Punjab, Haryana and Gujarat preferred to come from this side. But it became tougher for them after the Trump administration built a wall along several stretches of its border with Mexico. And also due to Title 42, which allows border officials to turn away migrants on the grounds of preventing the spread of COVID. So illegal immigrants are increasingly opting to come via the cold Canadian side, which generally has far less security as well. But on the morning Jagdish and his group were crossing, a US border patrol team was stationed right there around 9 am. They had already intercepted the van that the Gujarati group was supposed to reach which housed a few illegal immigrants from various countries who had made the crossing the night before, of which two were Indian. All of them, including the driver who was an American agent, were taken into custody. As the patrol team drove a few kilometers along the border, they found a group of seven Indians trudging through knee to waist deep snow. Immediately, the officials could tell that they were on the verge of hypothermia. Are you fine? No, please help us. We are almost dying. We have been walking 11 hours in this bloody snow. Take them in custody, but first, take them to the hospital. The patrol members rejoiced in their efficient morning's work, but their celebration was short-lived. One of them noticed a backpack full of toys and diapers that lay unclaimed on the snow. Is this yours? No, it belongs to a family with kids. They must be somewhere here. We lost them in the night. Knowing that time was of the essence in this biting cold, the Border Patrol launched an urgent search of the area involving drones and all-terrain vehicles. A mini-army of border guards on both sides of the border shoveled freshly fallen snow. Four hours into their search and rescue operation, just 12 meters short of the United States, still inside Manitoba on the Canadian side of the border, they found ice-encased bodies of the family, father and son frozen together, while the mother and daughter a meter away, so near their dream. Yet it was forever over now. Their deaths made the front pages of Indian newspapers and primetime shows of TV news channels. And a lot of pressure was put on the Gujarat administration to arrest the agents responsible. Still, it took Gujarat police an unexplainable 11 months to get their first breakthrough when they raided a gambling hub in Ahmedabad in December 2022. There, they arrested Bobby alias Bharat Patel, the kingpin of human smuggling in Gujarat. A search of his premises found 28 legally issued passports by Indian authorities, each with minor differences, allowing him to travel frequently to the same country multiple times without attracting attention. However, exploiting loopholes in the legal system, he secured bail within barely three weeks of his arrest in January this year. The police also nabbed Bhavesh and Yogesh Patel, the local smugglers, who reportedly took a whopping one to one and a half crore almost $190,000 from Jagdish to arrange the crossing. A sum that may have amounted to his entire life savings plus loans taken by mortgaging his land. 
the duo had reportedly sent 10 such dingucha families to Canada in the last few years, out of which three are still missing to this day. Surprisingly, it was Jagdish's elder brother Mahendra Patel who introduced Jagdish to the agents, for which he too is under suspicion for being involved in smuggling and for being involved in another recent case where a boat carrying nine Gujaratis trying to enter the US illegally via the Netherlands and West Indies reportedly sank in the ocean. Investigating agencies identified at least 11 spots in North Gujarat that are the epicenters of illegal immigration. They broke into the agent's four-tire modus operandi. First, a local agent, aka a Kabutar Baz pigeon carrier, identifies those looking to go abroad illegally. The second agent, with more specialized knowledge, figures out what additional documents would be needed and the type of visa required. At the very top are the bosses, who have the connections to procure forged documents like bank statements, residence proof and birth certificates. Then finally come their foreign accomplices, who take them across the Canada-US border. Though in Jagdish's case, they abandon them in the blizzard. US authorities are also on the hunt for one Fenil Patel and his accomplice Bitta Singh, the Canadian kingpins of smuggling. And though the US District Court in Seattle has already sentenced the Indian bond smuggler Rajinder Pal Singh to 45 months in prison, he is also a suspect in this case as well. Though Canada has easier and cheaper immigration laws, Gujaratis much prefer going to the US, as they have a safety net of a 150,000 strong community of Patels, like shown in the movie Kal Ho Na Ho. It's interesting to learn that migration of Gujaratis to the US happened over three waves. First, in the mid-60s, with the brain drain of educated doctors and engineers through a proper legal process. In the second wave, these people sponsored and brought in their extended families via family quotas. And in the latest wave, it's the lower to middle class Patidars who are daring to take risks to get there illegally. And even though this incident has highlighted the risks of crossing illegally from the Canadian border, the price to attempt it has increased from 35 lakhs of $45,000 per person earlier to 65 lakhs or $80,000 today. Yet, Gujaratis continue to be obstinate in risking their lives and their hard-earned savings to live the American dream. Because just five months later in May 2022, American authorities once again rescued six of them drowning in the St. Regis River while illegally trying to cross the border. But a Chaudhary family of four from Gujarat's Mehsana district were not that lucky, as their boat capsized in the St. Lawrence River and they drowned. It was nine days after Jagdish's death when his father, Baldev Patel, received a formal call from Canadian authorities. Mr. Baldev Patel, I am sorry to inform you that the four people found frozen to death near the border were... Along with the family, the whole village went into deep mourning with shops shut and streets deserted the next day. Unfortunately, Baldev Patel couldn't even bring back the bodies of his family as it reportedly takes almost 20 lakhs to do so per body. So Dilip Patel, Jagdish's cousin in US's Illinois, collected funds from the Indian community for their funeral on Feb 6th. A toy truck and stuffed animals poked out from the tiny coffin of three-year-old Dharmik and a stuffed unicorn rested alongside his sister Vihangi whose hair was adorned with a shiny pink bow. The smallest coffins are the heaviest indeed. Bisbo's Limerick Risking it all for the American dream, a land of promise, at least that's what it seems. But not easy to reach or the border to breach, alone in the snow, all that's left are your screams. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.